Okay, so in this video, I'm going to cover index and match functions. And it might be a single video or multiple videos. If you see something like part one in the video title, then there are multiple videos because there could be quite a bit of content here. What index and match uh, functions do? Well, we're gonna start by match function and we'll see what that does and we'll move on, right? So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and grab one of the stock numbers place it over here. Let's give this an appropriate label. So I'm gonna paste this here too. Now let's use our match function. So to use the match function, I'm gonna do it here. I'm gonna start equals match. And there it is. Tab should fill that in. So the first thing in this function is the search key. Search key is going to be the stock number so in this particular case, oops, should have been B15, this one, comma, and the range is going to be this range of stock numbers. I'm not including the label in there, by the way. So I'm going to lock that range with F4 key. You will see four dollar signs indicating the range is fully locked, comma, and the last argument is the search type. So I'm going to start with zero and close parentheses. So first of all, let's see what it does and then I'll try to explain you some specifics. So I'm gonna hit enter and it says four. So what does that four exactly mean? So what we actually did, we said, let's search for this B15, which is the stock number right here, in this range. And that range was this range over here. And as we started searching for it, it went from top here. So one, two, three, four and it found that it was number four item in that range, that item we're looking for. And as a result, it's going to return that four. So basically match gives you the position of the element it found. Now zero, the last argument here, stands for the type of match you want to do. Now in this particular case, zero means it's an exact match. So that's exactly what we're searching for. It's gonna search through this range and if it finds it, it's gonna return the position. If the item is not found, so let's say we're searching for 521 and it's not an item in the list, it's gonna give us NA because there is no item in the list. Now, if we do find the item, it's gonna show us the index, so position in that range, one, two, three, four. Number four is this. Now, if I switch this to this, this should be number six and you can see how it updates and gives us this, this is number six. So that's match. So match is searching for the position of our item in a range. Now that range could be either a single column or it could be a single row. So if our stock numbers, for example, let me do this paste special, I'm going to do transpose. Now let's say we're searching in here. So if they're located there, we're gonna do equals match. We're gonna search for this stock number, comma, in this range. So control shift right, F4 to lock the range, comma, zero for exact match. Close parentheses, hit enter. So it still gives me six, so I could look in a column or in a row, I'm still gonna find it. What you cannot do, you cannot include an entire table. So you could not do something like this. You're only searching in a single column or a single row. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't really need this. So let me get rid of that. And this as well. Okay, so that's our match function returns the position. Let's see what index function does. So I'm going to do equal sign index. So as a first parameter in index function, it's going to ask for the reference. So the reference in this particular case, let's say is going to be this range of prices. So again, I highlighted this range right here. I'm going to do F4 to lock that range for good practice, comma. Now it's gonna ask the row number. Now, if I go ahead and type five, and then I'm gonna do comma, and then it's gonna ask me what's the column number. Now, we only have one column, so I'm gonna do one. 
So let's first of all see what we get. So we get 160, and what this is, we gave it a range. This is our range right here on top. Let me close this. And we said in this range, we want the item in a fifth row. So it went one, two, three, four, five. It's not the fifth row in Google Sheets, it's the fifth item in the list here. So one, two, three, four, five. It's the fifth row and the first column. We only have one column. Now, because we only have one column, we don't actually have to provide the column number. We could just remove this and just say five. It will still do the first column by default. So if I switch this five to six, it should return the price for the item number six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, it's 130. That's that number over there. And that's exactly what I'm getting returned in here. Now, what we're going to do, this is hard coded six, which means if I go here and change the stock number, say to this stock number over here, this is going to search for that stock number. The match function is going to say now the stock number you selected is number two in the range. But this is not going to change because we selected hard coded number six. It's still going to give us the sixth item. It's not going to give us the second price. So what we do is that I'm going to undo a couple of steps here. So I'm going to get back to this. So this is six and this is six. What we do, we replace this hard coded six with this function match function which gives us the six. So I'm gonna go back to this match function. I'm gonna copy the whole thing, not including the first equal sign. Control C, go back here, go back to my index function. And instead of just typing six here, I'm going to remove that six and paste my match function right there. I'm gonna hit enter and it should still give me the same 130. The only difference is right now, if I copy one of the stock numbers and paste it over here, we should see how this dynamically updates to 100. So if we look up here, 874, it's 100. That's the correct price. And this is what we call one dimensional index and match. So we use match function inside of index function to have this option for us to search for something and then based on a position, go retrieve something from another range. And the key thing for this is when you use this, you want to make sure that the range you selected for your uh, index function, which is going to be this range, is the same size as the range you select for your match function. So you see how I started from here, right below the label, I went all the way down. I have this range, which by size is the same as the range for the second one. So both ranges have the same size. Hopefully that makes sense. So to redo this again, so let's say I want to search for the stock number and return the name of the product. So I could go here and do something like equals and I'm going to start with my match function. So in my match function, the search key is gonna be this comma. I'm searching for the stock number in this list of stock numbers. So I'm gonna select that list F4 to lock it, comma, zero for exact match. Don't forget that zero by the way and close parentheses, hit enter. That's gonna give me that this item was number seven in the list. Now I'm gonna go back, highlight this match function because I'm gonna need it in just a second. I'm gonna cut it with my control X and then I'll start my index function, index. Now I want to get the product name based on the stock number. So index function, the reference is gonna be this column of product names, not including the label, the same way I didn't include the label on this one, F4 to lock it, comma, and then it says the row number. So the row number is gonna be returned by my match function, which means I'm simply going to paste my match function here with my control V, and then this parentheses here is closing this. Now I still need to close this parentheses for my index function all the way in the end here, which means I have to do another one of these, hit enter. And as you can see, now we're looking up for this stock number, we're getting the actual name for the product. Now if we switch this to a different product number, this should change and it should go and find the name for that product. And this is what we do by utilizing index and match.
So this is what I call a single dimensional index and match. So we're basically using only one column in our index function. Uh, now index function will also allow you to work with multiple columns at the same time. So let's see how that works. So I'm gonna just copy this same stock number, put it here, right? And let's try to use our index function in a little different way. So what I'm gonna do, I'm basically, I'm gonna hit escape, just uh, go here. So see this match function used to return the row number. It gives us the row number three. I'm gonna go back and just copy that match function. So match function, see, starts here. The first parentheses until the parentheses close, the second parentheses for index. So I wanna make sure I just copy the match function. You can also just build that match function separately. If you're not sure, it's always a good idea to have a cell on the left and just try your function to make sure it works. Something like this. See, this should not be B15 by the way, it should be B16 to be this. Perfect, and see, there it is. When you test things, you actually see what happens. So there we go, so that returns our three, that's good. Now I'm gonna copy that as the row number, hit escape, get out of it, and here I'm going to use index function again. So equals index, and in index function now, I'm going to, yeah, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm going to actually select not a single column, but this entire data set, just like that. I'm gonna press F4 for good practice to lock the data. I'm gonna hit comma, and now it's gonna ask me for the row number. The row number is going to be, again, the match function. So I'm gonna paste my match function right there. And now, because I selected multi-column data in my index function, I'm gonna hit comma again to move to this column number. And I'm going to say, I want column one. So one would be the product name, right? So if I do one, close this parentheses, hit enter, that will give me the same thing. It gives me the name of the product because I selected column one from this data. Now, if I switch this to, let's say column three, that would give me the third column which will be training shoe, which for this item, 160, that's training shoe. Now, if I go and switch this to four, that would give me 130, which is for this item, see, 160, we go here, price, 130. So now we can play around with the column to see which column we want. Do we want the first column, the second column, the third column, the fourth column, as you can see, as I'm changing, you can see what the result is going to be. So we can now get different data depending on which column we select. So if I do five, that will effectively be the cost of our product. And because the match function is not hard coded, we can simply just go here and select any other stock item, and this should go get us the cost for this stock number. So now to take this to the next level, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this hard-coded five as well. So instead of just hard-coding that we want the column five, we're going to create another match function that will give us that column five. So let me show you what I mean. So what we're going to use, we're going to use this label on top, product name, and because this label says product name, we want to then get the name of the product. Now, if we change it to type, we would like to get the type of the product, which means what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another match function. I'll do it right here. And in this match function, I'm going to search for this product name label, comma, and because of the nature of match functions, we can either select a single column or a single row. Now I could find that product name label, see this is the product name label, that's what we're searching for. Now where am I searching for? I'm looking for that in here, in this range of labels on top. So I'm gonna lock that range with have four, comma, and zero as an exact match. So now what I'm doing, I'm searching for this text product name in this range of labels right here, in this range on top. Now let's see what it returns. So I'm gonna hit enter. It says one. So what is one? 
basically it's searching for this label product name in this range and it found it, it was the first item in the list. Now, if we switch that product name to say price, now it's gonna say four because it's searching for price in this label. So it's not the first, it's not the second, it's not the third, it's the fourth item is the price, right? Now I'm gonna replace this with product name again and it's gonna say one. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply just copy this match function that gives me that one, not the equal sign, hit escape, go back to this one and replace this five with my match function, the second match function I just did. I'm gonna hit enter and what it's gonna give me, if you look for this item, 874, we give the product name. And the reason it's the product name is because this label on top now says product name. Now if I go here and copy and paste price, it's gonna give us the price for that item. If I copy and paste the type, it's gonna give us the type of this item. So we can get any column by simply replacing the label on top and easily get what we need. So I'm gonna replace it back with this product name. 